other countries. In these times, there have also been the economic implications of uh, all of this pandemic that has started in Pakistan in March last year. To talk about the economic implications and a report that has recently come out by the Planning Commission that says Pakistan's 20.76 million workforce suffered livelihood losses due to COVID-related lockdowns. We've been joined by Fahim Sardar, who's a leading economist. Fahim, thank you very much to have joined us. Fahim, how important is this report by the Planning Commission? I think it highlights many of the issues that we have been facing for perhaps I think uh, the final year because of COVID. The planning commission, uh, the planning department is obviously trying to fix uh, uh, this thing from one particular angle and we're talking about labor right now. Uh, COVID has done something very strange which is it has really re-identified how uh, how communication is so important for us to, to do economic activity. For example, I'm on this program right now electronically. I used to come to the office, but this is an opportunity as well as with precautions. So um, economics has slowed down. It has almost some countries have gone belly up. And uh, Pakistan faced a lot of issues and our labor has been hurt. However, Pakistan still survived quite uh, you know, in a much better way than other countries. We really have a GDP contraction of 0.4%. India is minus 10 minimum. You have other countries which have gone absolutely into a spiral. Europe will take time to recover. We have to see how Germany is going to uh, come back up. But for Pakistan, it is very important for us to understand that labor, this is not, um, this is not most of this labor is basically lower class labor which they earn subsistence level revenues, subsistence level uh, wages, and they're the ones who come at the fringe of society. So one has to be uh, very mindful of, of that aspect, and the government has been trying to take care of uh, the most exposed in society. And of course, in labor, the government has been trying to reactivate uh, the labor force through the construction industry uh, uh, schemes that have been offered. Khalid Fahim, is that also one of the reasons why the trade deficit in the month of December has widened? It could be. It could be, but I would not, uh, I would not totally say that that is the entire reason because you basically have the economy which is starting to expand. Exports are going up, but imports are starting to pick up pace as well. Hmm. So uh, Pakistan has actually been uh, experiencing uh, dollar inflows. That's why the rupee is strengthening against the dollar as we as we speak. Your deficit is more, I think, uh, import related, not because of lower activity related. Uh, all indicators are showing that activity has started to increase, not decrease. The labor force is going to be back turned into this uh, fresh activity that I'm talking about, and that's why the government is pushing the construction industry and a couple of other sectors as well, so that people start being gainfully employed as soon as possible. Al Fahim, how are the different measures that you feel that the government has taken now, so that uh, I mean, as you said, the reinvigoration of the construction sector, uh, sector and other uh, uh, measures that the government has taken, how far will they go in, uh, if not reviving the economy of Pakistan, but at least stabilizing the economy of Pakistan? That's a, a good question. It's also a bit tricky, to be honest, because uh, you're asking me about the future, and of course, I mean, that's the main. You're an economist, at least you can give a broad <laughs> outlay of what could or could not happen. Sure. But uh, to, to be very practical and real, uh, as you can see, there's a, there's a term that uh, I also would like to use, it's called multiplier. The government has been rightly so focusing on multiplier sectors. These multiplier sectors are, if you put in one, Ounce of effort, you get multiple ounces in return in, in the avenues that are desired. So right now, what what the government is doing is they are focusing on multiple sectors. You, you may have we all have observed that the government is working about construction very specifically because construction tends to engage a lot of the society in, in various aspects. And I don't know if of industries are linked to construction mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So um, to answer your question uh, as practically as I possibly can, I would say that this is extremely helpful. If you touch a multi, if you touch a multi-class sector, it's helpful. All right. 
how important is the role of the DSSI as well? Um, I think that's important, but uh, we have to bear in mind that uh, of course we talk about the best we should Am I correct? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, are you talking about the debt rescheduling that's happened? Yes, yes, exactly. uh, yes. Uh, now, uh, this is important, but uh, we have to, uh, mm -hmm. I think this is an opportunity for us to try to just break away from that problem and we, we try to uh, increase our revenues and exports, which is quite possible, by the way, mm -hmm. so that we, we, we stop getting into this debt, uh, this debt trap. All right. All right. Uh, item. All right. Uh, now that we have a vaccine, final question, a very short answer. Uh, Fahim, now that uh, we have found different vaccines and the vaccine will be coming to Pakistan starting from March this year, uh, do you feel uh, that uh, the economy uh, of, uh, of Pakistan, especially the construction sector, especially the workforce, will heave a sigh of relief, might uh, get some kind of a boost one way or the other? I think so because uh, the vaccine is a safety mechanism. I mean, it's not a perfect mechanism, it's a safety mm -hmm. mechanism. Pakistan okay. immunity has been coming up. That has been uh, talked about by WHO and the World mm -hmm. Certified Highways and the COVID crisis. Uh, uh, the answer is yes, it will help the construction industry and uh, the vaccine can help us get back to work. All right. Thank you very much, Fahim, sir.